What's up, kids? It's Honest Abe here. All right, as I promised, I am here to give you part one of my story. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, it keeps turning off my comments. I'll figure that out. Um, but if you want to comment, you can go on my Facebook page. It's Abe Combest. You can, uh, you know, say something there, comment until I can figure out what's going on with this algorithm. I don't know if it's me or YouTube or whatever. Something I said or whatever. But um, yeah, I just want to get into this. And this is important because it's not about me. It's about this is how this happens to men in particular. And uh, it's actually common. My My story isn't that unique I mean it is unique but it's not that unique and uh hi hypergamy 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 uh so let me just start into it uh first with my dad <clears throat> my dad was uh he was a marine surveyor naval architect um engineer real smart guy um very charming charismatic uh, a lot of people, you know, they'd always say that uh, Frank could uh, talk the fuzz off a of peach. <laughs> uh, you know, he, he was just a fun guy to be around. Everybody loved him. Um, you know, he, he was just uh, kind of a man's man kind of dude. Uh, always had a funny story and just a way of talking to people that uh, was, you know, fairly special, unique. Everybody loved him. Um you know, some super smart guy, and he was he was a good looking cat. So, um, as far as my mother, uh, back in those days, she was a ten, easy. Um, you know, beautiful, uh, very intelligent. Um, you know, she was somewhere around 100, 150, 160 IQ, easy. Uh, but unfortunately, she was also uh, undiagnosed manic depressive uh, schizophrenic bipolar and uh, you know she spent her most of her life almost her whole life um you know being undiagnosed and i'm sure that she could have gotten help and, and her life would have been different and also you know my mother had a lot of kids for different dads um so that kind of gives you a window into that. So somewhere very early in my childhood, my biological parents split up. And then um, my mother wound up hiding, basically hiding me and my sister in uh, apartments in Houston, you know, moving us around, that kind of thing. Um, you know, and I saw I saw a lot of weird stuff. You know, my mom was freak outs. And, and uh, you know, I was locked into a closet for a whole day. You know, I just saw all this really um, unhealthy behavior. And I knew at a very young age that this wasn't right. You know, it shouldn't, things shouldn't be this way. You know, I even saw her freak out and throw a whole pot of pasta on the couch because she was angry at my sister, you know. <clears throat> so it's just volatile behavior. And um, long story short, my dad winds up finding us in Houston and uh, basically rescues us. And uh, we wind up going to Corpus where my dad had already met another woman and got married and we'd never met her. And so she became a stepmom. And uh, you know, I, did, I wasn't, I didn't necessarily disrespect her, but I would never call her like mom or anything like that. I always called her by her first name. And uh, you know, cause uh, she, even though I knew I had issues with my mother, she wasn't my mom. And, you know, I was still very young, but she did try, and I got to give her that. She tried. But, um, you know, when things started going south for my dad, you know, he wound up getting in trouble with the IRS and stuff, and the oil business went downhill, and, you know, we were on hard times, and IRS came down on him, we lost a car, we lost a ranch, and uh, she left of, left us. Uh, she basically, while we were all gone out of the house one day, had somebody come and clean out the house. Uh, even took the toilet paper and the ice trays out of the house. We're just like, what? Uh, okay. But she did all of this to go uh, hook up with the garbage man. 
And um, so there was that episode of the story. Um, my dad and I wound up, uh, my sister stayed um, in Texas where we were living, and my dad and I wound up in Houston, just me and him, uh, where he met another lady uh, who I absolutely loved. I still love her to this day. I mean, she's really the only um, mother figure that I had, strong mother figure, you know, feminine, that kind of thing caring, kind, compassionate. I loved her to death and she really was into my dad. And I thought, you know, this is going to work out. This is going to be, and I was, you know, at this point I was 10, 11. Um, <clears throat> and uh, all that seemed to be going pretty good until my dad tells me one day, hey, my wife is coming back. And uh, guess what? You're going to have a new baby brother. And I was like, uh, no, I'm not. That's the garbage man's kid. I'm not, you know, so here's a hypergamy story. <laughs> so, you know, because my dad fell on hard times and everything, she, you know, split on my dad. And I was really upset because I really liked this other woman that, and she was willing to marry my dad, but he had already had a vasectomy and all that kind of stuff. And so they couldn't have kids. And that was a big contention in that relationship. Um, so, you know, she wound up coming back. And uh, the fun part about that is not too long after that, after my dad spent a bunch of his wad, you know, getting us a town home and furnishing it and everything and making it all nicey nice for her. Um, she just up and decided she couldn't handle it anymore and left again. So the same woman left my dad twice. The second time she had a kid in tow. So it's like, I, I couldn't, even my sister and I to this day can't figure out what it was about her that had my dad so wound up. And sometimes I think, you know, it was he was bound by principle of wanting to save his marriage and, and not go through that again. But I was like, hey, you have this other woman who loves you. She's awesome. I love her. You know, like, let's do this, dude. And, um, you know, it, it just didn't work out. But she left again and cleaned my dad out. In fact, when I got home from school that day, there was a plastic picnic table with one um, folding chair and a note on the table for my dad. And I just remember seeing him open it, read it. And I'm looking at it. I'm just looking. I was at this point, I think I was 12 or 13. And I could just tell that at that moment he was a destroyed man. And he never was really the same after that. Um, and so that led into more circumstances as far as for me, because I was like 13 and I was starting to get attention from girls. You know, I was a good looking kid then. And of course, I was young and we're talking about, you know, junior high school age girls. So. You know, this this was having an effect on me. And I think I'll stop there for part one because that's that's a good stopping point to where we can get into the next chapter of all of the, my story of how I became betatized. Um, so I think you can get a little a little feel of where I'm going with this, uh, but it's going to get weirder <laughs> um, and, and and weird. And at the same time. It'll be like, oh, I've heard this a thousand times. So uh, that's the first part of the story. Like, subscribe. If you hit the likes buttons, this helps me with the algorithm big time. So, um, oh, there's, can y'all hear that? There's geese outside my car. I'm actually out here in Marble Falls. It's beautiful. I'm delivering some stuff for a client. So, uh, anyway, um, I'll leave you with that. So that's part one. I'm Honest Abe. And I will tell you this, I could be wrong, but I'm not lying. So be good to each other. Peace.